Yes, I can hold. Yes, I'd like to place an order for delivery. Wonder subset. I think I'm in the computer. Yes, that's it. I'd like a large... What? Huh? Extra thick! 30 minutes or it's free? Excellent! Ha 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 ha! I got an order for uh, Mr. Subset. Ah, that's me. Ah, there you go, sir. Thank you very much. Have a good day. <clears throat> I got a tip for you. Don't stick your foot in people's doors. <clears throat> ow, ow. What a dick. Samurai Jack, The Shadow of Aku. Now, this is a childhood game that was sadly not a part of my childhood, and I was a big fan of the show when I was a kid, so let's check it out. Samurai Jack was an action-adventure animated series released back in 2001 on Cartoon Network. The series was created by Russian-American animator Gendy Tarkovsky, who also created other famous works such as Dexter's Laboratory, Symbionic Titan, the 2003 Star Wars Clone Wars series, and of course his current show on Adult Swim, Primal. He also directed the Hotel Transylvania films, Two Stupid Dogs, The Original Powerpuff Girls, and The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, with the last two being the supervising producer as well. Samurai Jack was released during what I like to think of as Cartoon Network's Golden Age, the good old days where so many cartoons that I previously mentioned, along with classics such as My Gym Partner's A Monkey, Camp Laszlo, and of course my personal favorite Ed and Eddie were the real deal back in the day. A lot of these cartoons I watched as a kid were the pinnacle of my childhood and always made my weekends very enjoyable. When I wasn't playing on my Super Nintendo or Xbox on a Friday afternoon after school, I was watching Cartoon Network Fridays and seeing the new episodes of my favorite shows at the time. God, I miss those days. Now, of course, as you get older, tastes change and a lot of these cartoons I used to watch have aged pretty well and are still enjoyable, while some haven't aged as well. But of all these cartoons, Samurai Jack is one of those that has aged tremendously over the years. Even though the series is almost two decades old, the show still holds up today with its art style, animation, and storytelling. The show centers around a lone samurai warrior named Jack, voiced by Phil Lamar, who originated from feudal Japan as the son of the emperor of his homeland. Long ago before Jack was born in the series, the emperor faced the evil demon Aku, voiced by the late Mako Iwamatsu and by Greg Baldwin for later medias after Mako's passing. Aku was born from an evil entity from the far reaches of the galaxy, and partially by the Emperor unintentionally. During Aku's terrorization of his homeland, the Emperor was given a magic katana forged by the gods Odin, Ra, and Rama. This sword was a weapon of divine power that was the only weapon capable of harming and even destroying Aku. After defeating Aku, the Emperor used the magic sword to imprison the demon into the earth, but would be free years later after the eclipse that was shown in the first episode. With Aku free to reign terror on the land once again and taking the Emperor prisoner, Jack's mother sent him away to be trained and receive knowledge by many different warriors and cultures of the world in an effort to defeat Aku once and for all. Jack would then return to his home years later ready to face Aku. During the battle with the demon, he had the upper hand and severely weakened him with the use of his father's sword, but before he was able to finish him, Aku threw Jack into a time portal, leading him to the future where Aku's evil ruled the galaxy. Trapped in the future ruled by his archenemy, Jack must find a way back into his own time and defeat Aku to undo the future and save his people and the entire universe from the latter's evil. Throughout the series, Samurai Jack would also meet many memorable allies to help him on his journey as well, including Sir Rothschild, a talking dog who's an archaeologist, the Woolies, the Spartans, and most famously, the Scotsman, voiced by John DiMaggio. Samurai Jack is a show that is really easy to get into. Aside from the first three episodes for exposition, you can basically start anywhere from the series and not really get lost, considering how almost every episode follows a different story that doesn't lead to the one in the next episode. 
But I say almost because again there are the first three episodes and the two part prequel episodes from season three that showcase Jack's father fighting a coup and of course the Scotsman episodes. I remember being hooked on this show when I was a kid and would watch it almost all the time. The series captivated me with its action, charm, and animation. Not only was the animation appealing to me as a kid, but so was the voice acting. Aside from Lamar, DiMaggio, and Iwamatsu, a lot of the characters in the show were supported by many big-name veteran voice actors such as Tom Kenny, Rob Paulson, who voices Rothschild, Kevin Michael Richardson, Jeff Bennett, Jennifer Hale, Gray DeLise, Tara Strong, hell, even Mark Hamill, Josh Peck, and Tim Curry voice support for some episodes. Now as a kid, although I got an understanding of the story, I never really focused on it but instead the flashy animations and the action. Over time, as I grew older and moved to other interests, I later realized that I never finished the series and did not see how it ended. I didn't find out until 6th grade year that I did my research to find out the show never actually had an ending and was subsequently cancelled. So just like everyone else, I pondered to myself thinking, how will it end? Will the show ever come back? Will we ever see Jack defeat Aku and free the future from his tyranny? But then one day during my senior year of high school in 2015, I was browsing the internet only to come across the announcement that made my day. Samurai Jack was returning for a fifth season on Adult Swim's Toonami block, with some episodes being rated TVMA, showcasing more mature content and it definitely felt like Christmas came early for me that year. The fifth season of Samurai Jack was also the final season, so I was pretty saddened to find that out, but excited to see how they would conclude the story. Once 2017 came and the first episode of the season released, I spent every Saturday night feeling like a kid again until the final episode. Although the series ended on a bittersweet note for me after watching the final episode, Samurai Jack was still one of the cartoons that left an impact on me. I was a big fan of action cartoons when I was a kid, and this was also during the time when I was introduced to many other action cartoons and anime, such as Dragon Ball Z, Batman Beyond, Evangelion, and He-Man. Samurai Jack was a special case though as its animation gave it that western anime style vibe, and it would often tell the story through actions and scenery rather than dialogue. Now I could go on and talk about the show all day, but we're obviously here for something different. Now just like with any popular media, there will be video games to tie into that media. Back in 2004, a game based on the show titled Samurai Jack Shadows of Aku was released for the PS2 and GameCube. An Xbox version of the game was planned, but sadly never saw the light of day for unknown reasons. Although I've heard rumors that some copies exist, I doubt it. The game was published by Sega and was developed by Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment and the now defunct Adrenium Games, who also made Azuric Rise of Peraethia and the video game adaptation of Lemony Snicket's A Series of Unfortunate Events. Shadow of a Coup, along with the Metroidvania Game Boy Advance game Amulet of Time, which came out a year before, were the only two Samurai Jack games to be released. Unless you count the old Flash games on Cartoon Network's website, which I personally don't. Now after Season 5, I thought that would be the end of the series altogether. No more games, no more seasons, no more expanded media, nothing. And with Samurai Jack done, I assumed that Tarkovsky would move on to other projects such as Primal. But back in February, I was scrolling through my social medias until I saw an announcement that caught me by surprise. A new Samurai Jack game titled Battle Through Time was announced and just like everyone else, I was caught off guard by this. It was a real surprise announcement to be sure, considering that we haven't had any new media of Samurai Jack since the series ended back in 2017. The game is being published by Adult Swim Games and is developed by Solio, who previously worked on Naruto to Boruto Shinobi Striker. A Samurai Jack game with a new original story made by the creators of the series where you can relive some of the best moments of the show? Now that's pretty promising even for licensed game standards. The game looks like it has potential for fans of the series like me, and I loved how the art style for the game looks so far based off the trailers. Even characters from Season 5 like Scaramouche voiced by Tom Kenny and Ashi, Jack's love interest, voiced by Tara Strong will also appear in the game. The game is going to be released tomorrow on all digital platforms, and I'm looking forward to this new adventure. The game also currently has a limited physical release on limited run games available for PS4 and Switch. Since the new game is coming out, I thought I gotta get back, back to the past. Samurai Jack on PS2. Now you're probably wondering why it took me a while to make this review. Well one reason is starting next week I will be starting my last year of college. Another reason was because I've been playing a lot of Ghost of Tsushima. I've been playing the game since release and I'm not even halfway through the game yet. There's just so much to do and this game's starting to become my game of the year for me. But I think I let this review hang long enough so let's get this started. Now the game takes place sometime between the events of Season 3 and 4, or at least that's what I like to think based on this game's dialogue. Jack is in search of another time portal to return to the past to defeat Aku. 
During his travels, Jack comes across a villager letting Jack know that Aku's minions have taken over his nearby village. After saving the village from Aku's minions, the village priest tells Jack that he can find more information about the portal from the great tree spirit in the nearby forest. Jack then journeys into the forest inhabited what I like to think of as Forest Trolls, whose leader, the Great Tree Spirit, has made himself scarce while Oku's robots destroy the forest. After destroying the robots and saving the forest from destruction, Jack then travels to the nearby mines which the Great Tree Spirit informs him of where Aku uses the villagers from the first village as slave labor to dig hidden treasure, but in the process awaken something evil. After saving the archaeologist who Aku took as prisoner to help him with the mining, Jack then fought an ancient creature who was buried in the mine for centuries. After defeating the creature, Jack then tries to get to the time portal which was taken by Aku's minions during the mining operation, but couldn't catch the train in time. Jack then takes the next train to Aku City, where a majority of the neighborhood kids are in danger of playing video games. Are you here to save our friends? What has happened to your friends? Aku forces them to play video games that rot their brains into mush. Video games? Yeah, you know, you pretend you're a great warrior and you can pull off all these awesome moves and cut robots into pieces and it rocks, man! It's so cool! Except it melts your brain, yeah. What an insidious evil. It must be stopped. Show me what I must do. Is it just me, or is this game trying really hard to call out those violent video game controversies that happened back in the early 2000s? During Jack's mission in the city, the kids tell Jack about the creator of these harmful video games, and Jack searches for them in the sewer. The creator turns out to be none other than Extor, voiced by Jeff Bennett, the scientist from the episode who created the Ultrabots powered by Aku's evil to hunt down and kill Jack. Extor was once again taken against his will by Aku in order to make the video games, but after being rescued by Jack once again, he aids him in his quest for the remainder of the game. Jack would then fight in an arena afterwards against the robots that he's faced throughout the game, including the robot bosses from the first village. After defeating the robots, Jack faces the champion himself, the Scotsman, who fights Jack for literally no reason at all other than just for attrition. I do like how the cutscene before the fight paid homage to the episode where they first met. I will not fight you. I? I wouldn't expect you to, you wee little dress-wearing dwarf. You are trying to go me. If that's what you call it, you pint-sized wood shoe ninny. You're just scared to fight a real man with that butter knife, you wee sleepy daisy. I'll plaster this case with your guns and use what's left in the haggis. Enough! What do you think of that, Mr. Pajama wearing, basket face, sleeper wielding, Clyde three buckle, gather up and blade more, bleather and gominal, Jesse off looking stoner, near fluky sand, milk drinking, soy face, shoe pit, mim moved, sniveling worm eyed, hooting block, vile stooting calibre tatty. After fighting the Scotsman, Jack and him managed to escape. Jack fought his way through the city while the Scotsman wanted to go eat some haggis, I guess, because he doesn't appear after you two escape, he just disappears. Afterwards, Jack ventures to a part of the city where he finds the machine that powers the video games and destroys it. After saving the kids and destroying the video games for the sake of all the Karens out there, Jack then takes a portal which looks very similar to the one from Superman 64 to Aku's lair where he fights Aku himself as the game's final boss. Jack manages to get the upper hand but the floor collapses below him and he starts falling to his death, but was saved by the Scotsman at the last minute and they both manage to escape. They then drive off into the sunset to eat some sushi and haggis. Or at least that's what I like to believe. Now that the story is out of the way, let's look at the game itself. First thing I want to talk about is the graphics. Now I just want to point out that I'm not someone who is a diehard when it comes to graphics, but I still like to have an opinion about a game's graphics because I understand how crucial they are to games. When you first boot up the game, you'll notice that the graphics are very cell shaded. This was back during the time where Cartoon Network licensed games tried to emulate their show's art style using cell shading. That way it fits well to the animation of the show but is still friendly to the hardware that was used during those days. It worked really well at the time and a lot of these games including Samurai Jack were pretty decent with it. Nowadays I look back on these games and some of them have aged decently while others are kind of ugh. Samurai Jack is kind of one of those games. The graphics are okay and it emulates the show's art style pretty well, 
but you can definitely see how dated it is just by looking at it. Which is ironic considering how famous the show is for its art style. Hell, there were even times when the environment I was in was kind of bipolar. Places like the forest in Aku City looked bleak, although I guess with the latter's case that was the point. The village was more colorful and lively, and the mines actually weren't bad either because I feel like it was supposed to look dark and damp. I also like the nice glowing effects from the crystals. This is another reason why I'm excited for the new game, because the graphics emulate the show more accurately, and the art style is so much better. What I will give this game credit for in the mines and in the forest at least is its water and lava effects. The water in particular was actually animated really nicely, and the waterfall effects definitely look like something you'd see from the show. Like, the thing is, the game doesn't look ugly, it's definitely not the ugliest cartoon license game I've played. But it's not outstanding either. While most of the character models portrayed how they looked on the show, well, there were moments where the characters for the game looked really weird, stiff, and just plain cringeworthy. I mean, just look at the forest trolls. He used to be, now he just hides in his tree, while Aku's robots burn the forest. I'm scared. We need a new leader. Be our leader. Yeah. And let's not forget the forest tree spirits. Stop Aku. Is that really possible? Yes, it is. My father's sword is the only weapon that can defeat him. I will rid your forest of Aku's drones if you will not guide me. Very well. I will help you. Follow me. Yeah, my thoughts exactly. I mean, weird stuff like this happened on the show almost all the time. I mean, there was an episode where Jack turned into a chicken and he had to save an entire village from a dragon with indigestion, but this is just straight up weird and unexpected on a whole other level. I mean, it went from a giant talking acorn to a very stiff model talking squirrel. I don't even know if I should question that. And while I'm talking about this, let's not forget the part where Aku's lips decided to not move during the final cutscene. Oh, uh, dear God, what the hell happened there? Did the animators just have like an off day or something and forgot to notice that small moment? I feel like if I played this game as a kid, I'd be traumatized just seeing that. Now the game's action-adventure style is set up to where you have a hub world that leads you to different areas, each with their own missions that you must accomplish in order to beat the area and unlock the next. After beating the first village, you unlock the hub world that leads you to the next three areas I mentioned previously. The forest, the mines, and finally, Aku City. Each area has two missions that are already unlocked and you can choose which one to start at first. Completing both of them unlocks a third mission and after finishing that, you unlock the boss of that area. The missions usually range from saving the prisoners from a burning area, rescuing a person of importance who's been taken prisoner, and destroying something the enemies are creating like this giant statue of Aku that is definitely... EXTRA THICK! Okay, I'll stop there with the joke. A majority of the missions in this game have the same objectives and it's kind of weird, honestly. You'd think they would be unique, but sadly they just rehashed most of the same objectives throughout the game, but gave them different coats of paint. Gameplay-wise, it's actually pretty good. The combat in this game flows pretty well once you get used to it. The X button is for light attacks, while the circle button is for heavy attacks. You can even push the two buttons in certain patterns to make some awesome combo moves. Throughout the game, you can collect combo scrolls which give you new and unique combos to use in the game. In order to use these combo moves, you need to hold down the block button, which in this case is R1 on the PS2, and putting in the correct combo inputs. They're pretty useful to use to take out enemies pretty quickly, and they can also be used for crowd control when enemies swarm up on you. They're also really flashy and fun to watch when you pull them off. You also have this ability called Sakai Mode. No, not Jin Sakai. Sakai Mode makes time slow down in your favor, which makes enemies easier to fight, and gives you a chance to jump out of a hairy situation. It also does more damage to enemies, and Jack's attack animations are different depending on the inputs. What I love about Sakai Mode is when you activate it, it causes these borders to come from the top and bottom portions of the screen, which tends to happen in the show during very intense moments. What's also cool is that if you face two enemies at once, you can go back to back on them, and Jack will sometimes do a unique double kill animation, and it looks really Really badass. It can also be useful for platforming, but I'll get to that in a bit. Destroying enemies will help fill your Zen meter for Sakai mode. 
Now don't think you'll have Jack's sword as your only weapon for the whole game. You also have projectile weapons such as shurikens and your bow, which you can get ammo of by destroying these small Aku totems. Use triangle to throw shurikens at enemies which are really useful to do some quick damage and are especially useful on weaker ones that die from one or two hits. Then you've got Jack's bow which does a little more damage but is a little slower compared to using the shurikens. Be sure to keep count of your arrows when you use it though, because Jack will continue to use the bow even after you run out. This threw me off so many times when I used it because I wasn't paying attention to my arrow count so when I ran out I kept shooting without even realizing I was out of arrows. Now an action adventure game isn't one without a few upgrades or power-ups, and this game sure does have some useful ones. Each area you are in you can unlock a new power-up for your sword. To do this you must simply save the prisoners of the area who are trapped in cells. Saving at least 30 will award you the power-up. You get the Fire Sword for saving 30 villagers from the very first area of the game, the Crystal Sword for saving 30 in the forest, and the Lightning Sword for saving 30 in the mines. Oddly enough, you don't get one saving the teenagers in Aku City. Instead, they're only there just for the sake of rescuing to get 100% completion. These elemental powers are a really nice upgrade, honestly. Certain enemies are really weak to certain elements, and the best way to test that out is switching between power-ups while fighting by using left and right on the d-pad. And it's not just your sword that is affected by these elemental power-ups, but your shurikens and bow and arrows as well. I love using the crystal power-up for my sword because the glowing green effect is really pretty to see, especially when you use it to fight. It looks like Jack is using a lightsaber with this. One of my only complaints with the combat in this game is that you can be interrupted so easily during an attack. You have to make sure your timing is right, otherwise the attack won't go through because most of the time the enemy can cancel out your attack, just by attacking you back and it can be really easy for them to do if you're not careful. They can even do it during your special moves and when you do those multi-attacks I mentioned. I can't tell you how many times that has happened to me and how frustrating that is because I'll be in the middle of kicking some robot ass only for my combo to be cancelled in the middle of it. I mean I learned my way around eventually but still it did not need to be that damn frustrating. But regardless of that flaw I am honestly surprised at how flowy the combat is. At least it is to me. There can be a variety of different ways to fight and defeat your enemies and these techniques are especially helpful for bosses. One of my favorite enemies to fight in this game are these dudes that remind me of the Draugr from Skyrim. I freaking love fighting these guys. They spawn like hives but they are so weak to the crystal sword and it's so much fun to fight them and cut them down using my different combos and attacks. God it looks exactly like what you would see in the show. But there are times where I got a little overconfident and I didn't pay attention to my health and died. But the checkpoints in this game are really good and you'll be back to where you left off in no time. Wait, 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 wait. So you're telling me that if I die, my Zen meter will empty completely and all of my Sockeye will be gone? What the f- Alright, it's not so bad because most of the enemies are pretty easy to fight and usually by the time you get to where you were before you died, You'll have enough Sakai to help you out. Still, it's kind of annoying when it happens, especially when you kind of need a lot of that for certain battles. The bosses in this game are surprisingly unique and none of them are the same from each other. The boss where you fight these two big ass robots is easy, you just need to use Sakai, then do a cartwheel jump and attack them from behind. The boss in the forest was a little more challenging as you had enemies coming all over the place and you can only attack the thing if it had its shoot from behind open. The magma boss in the mines was pretty cool but frustrating because you can't attack this guy without getting hit. And then you've got Aku as the final boss of the game which was actually my favorite because this one was actually challenging and not painfully frustrating. I died a couple of times in this fight but I learned how and got better through it. You basically fight mini versions of Aku like Jack's father did in the episode and Aku takes different forms. I mean the pattern is the same but it's not painfully repetitive. And trust me when I say this, Make sure your attack power is as high as possible, because a high attack power combined with the use of Sakai can make this boss a breeze. The game also has sub-bosses, such as the Scotsman which I previously mentioned, which didn't really feel like a boss, I mean the way how I beat him was pretty cheap and easy. And then you've got Mad Jack, who appears just before the final fight with Aku. Mad Jack was created by Aku from all of Jack's anger, frustration, and other negative emotions to use against Jack. He's basically an evil version of him. Jack defeated him in the episode he fought him in, but he returned the same way as he first appeared, and Jack needs to defeat him once again in order to progress. This dude did not mess around and was really fun to fight. You want to talk about a mirror match? This fight against Mad Jack pretty much has it down. 
The game also has pickup items to help you out. Throughout the game, Jack comes across sushi which replenishes his health. There's the small sushi to partially replenish his health, and then there are the larger sushi that replenishes his health completely. Also, I love the way how Jack says sushi every time he picks it up. Sushi. 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 I also like how Jack's damaged character model looks when he's low on health because it's how he looked in the show at times when the odds weren't in his favor. There are also armor pickups in the game which upgrades itself and lasts longer when you move to the next world. It'll start off with what looks like it's made of bamboo and is the weakest in the game, then going to the forest it'll be made of sturdier wood along with the straw hat, going in the mines will upgrade the armor to make it look like something from Quake, and Aku City gives you what looks like an actual samurai armor. The design of this is actually pretty cool. Wait, is that a saucepan for a helmet? You can also pick up these tokens that fill up your Sakai meter instantly, which are really rare in the game apparently. During my first playthrough recording this, I came across at least three or four tokens. I mean, it doesn't really matter. You get Sakai from destroying enemies and it can fill up pretty fast, but I was surprised at how rare it is. Then again, I guess it would make the game too easy. Finally, you've got these relics which are found throughout the game. These are what you collect when you want to purchase upgrades for yourself. To get these upgrades, you have to go up to these three shrines which can be found in the hub of each mission area. One is for health, one is for Sakai, and one is for the attack power. If you have the right amount of relics, you can purchase the upgrades, but the price of the relics will increase until you reach max level. I make my health my top priority, but I also upgrade my power in Sakai. Mainly my power because, again, Sakai is not hard to keep it filled as long as you don't go crazy with it. Now that I got the stuff that I liked about the game out of the way, let's talk about what I don't like about the game. For one thing, the platforming. Now the platforming in this game isn't stiff nor is it finicky in any way, but it is very picky at times. Not picky in a way where it's a fair challenge, but picky in that it can be generally frustrating at times. And no, it's not like Castlevania's platforming. So Jack's jumping is based off of how much momentum he has when he jumps, which I guess is good to get a sense of the feel for this game, but there were times when I died either because of bullshit or over something that was sort of out of my control. Take this part in the forest for example. I jumped in this spot here only to be attacked by these annoying ass robots, and as I tried to get away I jumped without any momentum, and the reason why this was bullshit was because even if I ran to get momentum, the enemies would have attacked me and I would have ran out of health. Or this moment in the mines when I tried to jump right at the end of the edge there so I can get to the other platform, only to completely miss it and fall into the lava and die. But that partly could have been my fault. But those two don't compare at all to this one part in Aku City where you needed to jump on the hovercars in order to progress. I fucking hated this part because I died so many times either because my momentum was too much or too little or because I had landed on a smaller car just to have a taller one ahead of me and I couldn't jump high enough because you can't get any momentum on these stupid things. Actually scratch that. All three of those don't compare to this one mission in Aku City where you have to climb up this clock tower in order to get inside. Once you get to the hands, you have to make sure that one of them is in the right position and you need to make sure your momentum is just right. Otherwise, you'll fall and have to climb back up all over again. Now you would think that when that would happen, my screen would turn black and take me to my previous checkpoint, right? Nope. That only happened to me one time and that was because I missed the jump on this elevator. At some point I stopped trying and instead let the nearby robots kill me because I had a checkpoint save before I fell. And Jack's legs are still apparently strong from the jump good man because he barely takes any damage at all from fall damage. The platforming in this game isn't terrible, in fact I like that it's based off of momentum, the only problems I had with it were what I just mentioned. You just need to be careful and time your jumps right and have the right amount of patience and momentum. The enemies in the game are mainly robots and they are usually the same, but the game tends to add one or two more new ones in each level. I mean, some levels have unique non-robot enemies such as these annoying ass tree gremlins that have this shield, which is hard to tell when they use it or not. These guys made me want to pull my hair out so bad when I fought them, they were so annoying. And then there's Aku's minions which appear in Aku City and Aku's lair. Some of them are pretty easy to fight once you get the pattern down such as these dudes with the swords, but they have this annoying way of being vulnerable to attacks. Then out of nowhere will be invincible to my attacks no matter where I hit them and I gotta wait for them to be vulnerable again somehow. And then there's the dudes with the whip which are kind of annoying as their whip can't be dodged. I was able to use Sakai to gain the upper hand on them, but dodging would have been helpful. Now another thing I don't like about this game is how repetitive it can be. I mentioned previously that each area had basically the same missions with different looks. When I got to the mines and started doing the same thing, that's where the game started to get a little boring for me. 
Each area barely had their own unique missions and instead recycled the most common ones from the previous areas. Hell, even in Aku City when they talk about how they were being harmed by the video games, I thought that the teenagers would have its own unique machine they'd be imprisoned in. Instead, it's the same small cage that you saw throughout the game. So were the forest trolls and reptilian villagers playing the video game too? Those are basically my qualms about it at least. I mean, the game is still fun despite being repetitive, but this isn't something I would go back to unless for nostalgic purposes or if I wanted to play something simple. Aside from going back to find the stuff you missed just to get 100% completion, there is very little replay value for this game. And the reason why I say that is because when you beat the game depending on the difficulty you chose, you unlock some bonus content in the extra section of the main menu called Chronicles. But the way how you unlock it is weird. When I played through the game for the first time for the review, I played it on normal and unlocked the background gallery. But in order to unlock the sketch and model galleries, you need to play the game on easy for the sketch and hard for the models. That really doesn't make any sense to me. So you're telling me even though I played the game on normal difficulty, I still have to play the game on easy in order to get the sketches? Why not already give me the sketches since I beat the game on a higher difficulty than easy along with the backgrounds? So in order to get all these, you need to play this game exactly three times. That is bullshit. But aside from all that, I will say I did enjoy playing this game. The combat was fun, the story felt like something I would see from the show, and the experience was really nostalgic. Despite how picky the controls can be, you feel like you're playing Samurai Jack himself. I like the inclusion of the characters from the show, and I also like that it had unique characters exclusive to the game, but it still felt like something from the show itself. The music in this game is really good too, but my favorite from this game soundtrack would have to be the one that plays during the skyscraper section. It sounds so funky and I love it. least favorite parts of the game and it has the most catchiest soundtrack and if it wasn't for that soundtrack I probably would have said fuck it and this review probably would have been finished by Halloween. I also like some of the references and easter eggs this game had such as this easter egg where if you make Jack stand idle in the forest for a few minutes he bends down and he starts making a straw hat for himself like what he wears in the show. You can wear it in the forest but once you leave it whether it be to start a mission or go to the hub world it disappears. And look at these chickens, I wonder what happens if you attack them. Oh shit! Fuck the Kukos from Zelda, these guys are fucking badass! Okay, that wasn't so bad. I'm sad that this game never released on the OG Xbox when I was a kid because I feel like I would've enjoyed the hell out of this game. And considering that Samurai Jack was one of my favorite cartoons growing up, and even though the game is repetitive, it would probably be the type of game I would play every once in a while if I feel like going on a nostalgia trip. I would recommend getting this game if you're a fan of the series and early 2000s Cartoon Network stuff. I personally give this game a 7.5 out of 10. The game has its issues such as the platforming and how repetitive it is, and its lack of motivation for replay value, but it was still a fun experience. If you own a GameCube or PS2, I would recommend giving this game a shot if you're a fan of the show. And that's another adventure out of the way. You know, playing this game made me realize how much I truly love this show. Like, I grew up with this show, it had a lot of impact on me as a kid, I loved the art style of it, and watching the final season, you know, really brought back a lot of childhood memories, just like playing this game has for the review. And this is making me even more excited for the new game that's coming out. I have it pre-ordered on my Xbox, and it's coming out tomorrow, so I really can't wait to play it. But yeah, thank you guys for watching this review, and I hope to see you in the next one. Oh, that reminds me, before I end this video, so if you haven't followed me on Twitter yet, uh, I will leave a link in the description box to my Twitter if you'd like to follow me on there. And on my Twitter right now, there is a voting poll, and the voting poll is for you to decide what Cartoon Network game I should review next. And there's four choices, it's going to be up for a week, uh, once the week is over I'm going to see what votes have tallied up, and that will be the decision on what review, on what game I should review next. So, uh, I look forward to seeing the results, and I hope to see you guys in your next video that you decide for me. See you guys later! Watch out.